Welcome to winter. For those of us lucky enough to live in Southern California, this is our riding season. Unless it rains for more than one day at a time. Unfortunately for many of you, your favorite trails are covered in snow, the weekend temperatures are going to involve a single digit, and you are longingly looking at your bike and dreaming of better days. So what do you do while waiting for the snow to melt or the rain to stop? You can read a book, binge watch a TV show, or wallow in sadness because your bike hasn't seen the dirt for a month and there is no end in sight. Or you can pick up rock climbing. Why rock climbing? It can be done indoors, and chances are you have a climbing gym closer than you think. Rock climbing shares a lot of similarities with mountain biking. The sense of community is ever-present, the culture is fun, and it's a sport that you do individually or with a group of like-minded people. Oh, and say goodbye to arm pump after a single run at the bike park. Let's go climbing! What's up mountain bikers? This is Chris Wessels with MTB Trail Review. Today I'm at Vertical Hold in Poway, part of San Diego, and we're rock climbing. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by my buddy Stefan. He's a professional mountain biker. Also, recently started a coaching slash guiding business. So if you're looking to learn some new trails in the San Diego area, or just improve on your skills, this is your guy. I'm going to provide a link to his website in the description. Make sure you check it out. Appreciate so, why are we rock climbing on my mountain bike channel? Well, rock climbing and mountain biking are very similar, believe it or not. Uh, it's a wonderful sport to do indoors, which is great, but you can also take it outdoors. Uh, that, that's the one thing that I really like about it. It gives us that flexibility when we can't mountain bike, kind of like I was talking about earlier. Uh, a lot of the skills in rock climbing will actually help you with your mountain biking. And to me, the number one skill, first and foremost, not really even a skill, it's just a strength issue. If you've ever been downhilling, and if you're watching my videos, you know I like to go downhilling. Arm pump is a serious thing. You do your first two runs, and then you have to peel your fingers off the handlebars, and you're kind of toast for the day. You're, you still want to keep riding, but it's, it's almost not fun because your hands hurt so bad. So I started rock climbing right after I started downhilling. After rock climbing for a month, I've never had an arm pump again. And the reason is, if you look at these holds, like they look fantastic, but when you have all your body weight on there, it's really an exercise in grip strength. So by exercising that grip in a different way, the arm pump goes. Your grip strength is incredible. You don't need rev grips, even though they're nice, <laughs> because you just have that strength. It's fantastic. So that's one Absolutely. of the benefits. I'm going to pass it off to Stefan to talk about some of the other ones. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think one of the, the big ones for me uh, that resonates well is that really the two sports go hand in hand. I mean, you look at the community in mountain biking really focused on outdoors and you know being good stewards to the land trail maintenance that sort of thing pack it in pack it out climbers have that same exact mentality um, you know very respectful people who are always doing crag cleanups things like that um, and the other cool thing about it is every awesome mountain bike spot happens to also be usually a great rock climbing destination um, you know, we go up to Big Bear and race all the time. We're downhilling yeah. up there. Some great uh, climbing. Great climbing just across the lake. You know, I'll go do my race on a Saturday, go camp across the lake to Climbers Camp and climb Holcomb Valley the next day. So Moab, also a, a key example there of, uh, you know, both, both uh, world-renowned climbing and mountain biking destinations. So, yeah, that's another thing I love about it is definitely just that community. Everybody's real friendly and they, they're very inviting uh, sport as well. So um, I'll pass it off. You know, back to Chris, that'll uh, talk about some progression. So going back to kind of what I was talking about earlier with that strength, uh, one of the main things that I've seen for me personally is my core strength has increased dramatically. And it's not something that you really have to work out with climbing. It's kind of incorporated into it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go do a 45-minute core workout before I go climb. Totally. I, it's there. And you think core strength, I'm mountain biking, whatever. It's a big deal. Uh, if you're somebody who's ever experienced lower back pain while riding, that's because you have a weak core. So if you can get that core strength up, instead of having lower back pain after 15 miles, you're gonna go 25 miles, assuming everything else is working out for you, and you're gonna be pain free. So it's just another one of those things where the benefits of rock climbing are going to make you a better mountain biker. Absolutely. For a minute. That's, that's a real good uh, topic, I like that, because you know it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility and movement and when you're on the bike you're always 
kind of move it forward, you know. And I, I know mountain biking, you're, you're kind of whipping your bike around a little more, you're doing some side-to-side -side movement, but generally speaking, your pedal stroke, all these things, you're kind of on this one forward axis for the most part. And with rock climbing, not only is it the strength, but it's a lot of weight shifting, you're twisting your spine, all these things. So you're gaining a lot of core strength, you're increasing flexibility, um, and I think it, it's going to make you a safer rider. And as far as injury prevention, things like that, if you do take a spill, you're gonna, your body's going to be able to handle that sort of pressure uh, and impact a lot better, uh, especially over long periods of time. I mean, I'm an endurance cross-country racer, and, and being able to last for those last few hours of an eight-hour day on a bike, rock climbing has played a huge role um, in my riding. So back over to Chris. All right, and finally, one of my favorite things about rock climbing is it kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with mountain biking with your mindset. They're both very, very similar. Uh, rock climbing is not an easy thing, nor is mountain biking. And everybody's going to start somewhere. And chances are, when you first start, you're going to be at the bottom of the barrel. It's not one of those things where you're just going to naturally be good at it. It's going to take practice. It's going to take lots of, you know, trusting your belayer, trusting the wall, trusting your bike, trusting the trails. So the sense of progression is there. Uh, going from a 5.5, which is kind of like the lowest you're going to see in a gym, up to a 5.15, which most of you will never ever, ever hit, myself included. Like Nor I. Yeah. Nor I mean, I. just kind of working your way through that pro progression is cool. It's like going from your green trail to you hit a first blue. Now you hit your first black. Now you're doing the double black jump line. It's kind of the same thing on the wall in a different sense, but it's got that same mindset. So... It's, uh, you know, it's like the shirt says, I'm just going to send it. Yeah, and, and that's also, uh, you know, what, what you'll end up doing, just like when you session a trail on a mountain bike, going, sticking with that progression idea, you'll kind of learn the lines on a, on a mountain bike trail, and the same thing happens on a climbing wall. You know, the same exact thing. You look at a climb at first, and you're getting the wrong holes with the wrong hands, and the more and more you do it, you start to just see the movement of the wall just like you would a trail and where you can corner and things like that and how to shift your weight on the wall and that, you know so um, yeah they're just they, they just go hand in hand so perfectly together but, yeah. and then once you find a climbing buddy which is kind of necessary just like you have your biking buddy it, it gets really fun because you have two completely different styles uh, riding with Stefan, he's going to look at lines that I'm not going to look at right. I'm going to look at lines that he's not going to look at yeah. so we'll switch off and follow each other like I never thought about that. I'm, I'm going to take that line next time. That's it's really the cool. exact same time with climbing. That's really You'll cool. watch a guy go up and you're like, huh, never thought of that. I yeah. should try that. And it'll go vice versa. So, yeah, it's, it's really a similar mindset. Yeah. yeah. So that's enough talking about climbing. Let's go climb. That was good. That was good. That was good. I mean, based on our previous draft record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, last time we were playing, I mean, as it's Here comes like, Chris. He's going to crush this over here. Yeah, gonna... So, right now I'm getting into the overhang. This is where you're going to really start to feel it. And you want to kind of stay long. You'll really feel it in your grip. This is where it really, 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 really benefits your mountain biking. So, if you do decide to climb these overhangs, Oh, what you want to focus your time on the most? That's a very good foot. Nice. You kind of skipped double moves there, but that's all right. You can get creative. Going for some dynamic movement. So even on this one, this is a 5.8, a much easier climb. You can still see the body movement. You can see where the grip strength comes into play. And as you climb harder stuff, you'll really, really, really start to feel it. Even the flexibility. So, there's one climb there. We'll Good job. A bit. Excellent. So, so Stefan's about to hit an 11B. This is much more difficult than what I was just on. And you'll see a little bit of that body movement we were talking about. So you can see the holes are a lot smaller. Really, really engages that forearm. You're gonna see his body change positions a lot. Huge step there. It's good stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna climb a little bit with the camera. So keep me tight.
was a terrible idea. <laughs> Tried to grab one, something wasn't there. Ball spawning you up. Woo. Yeah, these are some small holes. Some big moves. Nice. And so you can really see the fingertips working in the forearm strength. Playing a huge roll in these. All the way up, baby. Take it away. All right, so we're done climbing. We did some overhangs. I hit a 5.11 B today, which for me is congrats. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. And I'm beat. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the steering wheel on the way home. <laughs> but that means when I go trail ride again, no more fun. A couple days, you'll be solid, man. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I hope you enjoyed us today. I hope you get a chance to check out Rock Climbing. And don't forget to check out Stefan's website for yes. coaching and guiding opportunities. Please do. My website is my name. It's stefanrock.com. Um, check me out on Instagram. That might be a little easier to remember. Swiss Mountain Biker. So, Swiss MTN Biker. Uh, that is my handle. You'll find a link there to my website, all the services I provide. Um, yeah, please check me out. You know, if you need any any advice on not just cycling, but just outdoor sports in general, I'm always here to help. Uh, my phone number and email is on there directly. So uh, please get a hold of me. And thank you for, for joining us today. Big thank you to Chris. And of course, for inviting me out. out. Yeah. Vertical hold for having yeah. us. Yeah. And as always, don't forget to like the video. Comment on your favorite place to ride in rock climb. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for climbing with us today. We'll see you next time.